it would be, let's say Easter, and I'll, I'll pick a memory from my childhood. We usually had ham on Easter. And I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, it's been so long, but we had ham. And we usually did wore Easter hats and gloves. And I had this little handbag. And so I'm probably about five. And I, we had just left church and it was very windy and there was a river by the parking lot of our church. And I remember just walking around oblivious, not obsequious, but oblivious <laughs> to what might happen. And next thing you know, the wind takes my hat and blows it into the river. And needless to say, being a little girl and just loving the flowers and in my little dress and my little outfit, I was heartbroken. So this gentleman clambers down the riverbank and it's steep, it's really steep and I'm crying and he grabs my hat and he climbs back up and he's probably all dirty in his nice Easter suit. And he gave me back my hat. And then we went home and had ham, thank you. You've just been invited to an Easter celebration where you'll have to cleverly make your own Easter bonnet. The best one for originality wins the blue ribbon. Toastmaster Tabitha, what will your bonnet look like to win over the competition? Excellent. Thank you. And good morning, Toastmasters. I actually had this occurrence. I had to make a hat for an Easter tea that we were attending and I was bringing my mother-in-law. And what we needed to do, nothing could be store-bought. So your hat could not be, the base of the hat could not be store-bought. You had to make it all on your own. So for my, my mother-in-law, she was making hers out of fabric because she could sew using a, a sewing machine. However, for myself, I do not sew. So what I did was I fashioned a band out of elastic, and then I went into my daughter's uh, box of dresses, and I found some feathers, and I poked some feathers in around my band. We went to the tea, and I actually won first place for originality and my mother-in-law won second place. And I actually have a picture of that uh, tea that we attended and the hats that we created. So it was an Easter tea uh, for the ladies of our church. Thank you very much. Some interesting food came out during a Passover Seder such as chopped liver and gefilte fish. Toastmaster Kim Gleiner. Kim. I'm sorry, Kim. Are you on the schedule? Okay. Nate Bo, what is the most interesting dish that you've had during a holiday mm. dinner? Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. One of the most interesting foods I had was when I found that the Italians like canned fish and such like that. <laughs> what they do is they take them little fish and sardines that most people want to make fun of because you put them on the pizza and the pink little nasty like. Take them things, you put them in the pig with some garlic, you put a little bit of olive oil, and you cook up that stuff so much that the whole neighborhood is stanking and real funky like. And then what you do is you add a little more olive oil, add a little more sardines, add a little more garlic. And when you run out of garlic, go to your neighbor and get some more garlic because you're going to need some more. When you're done, you put a little parmesan in there. And I'm telling you, it sounds nasty, it sounds funky, but it is delicious. You did bread, vegetables, and all kinds of stuff like that. And that's what I did on, I think it was New Year's Eve. Thank you. We've all relished in pranks to our friends or family on April Fool's Day. What is the worst prank you've ever played on a friend or a loved one? Darby Israel. First prank I ever played on a friend or neighbor. Darby, we have the next one. Alex, go ahead, Darby. <laughs> no, that's how I looked in uh, person. 
But uh, worst prank I ever played on a neighbor, I would have to say. I'm not much of a prankster, and um, I could think of a of a prank I did in high school, where I think it was something to the extent of pulling um, pulling all the stuff out of one kid's locker and hiding it in mines, but then um, the police ended up getting called, and the police report ended up getting filed. And it turned out to not be so funny. Um, but I would say in hindsight, it wasn't a big deal. Just enjoy a laugh. I don't know. It was random. Michael O'Shaughnessy, what is your sense of humor? I love that name, by the way. You can tell you're Irish. <laughs> so the coolest prize you've ever gotten from a plastic Easter egg, Toastmaster Lucky O'Shaughnessy. Um, thank you for the lovely table topic, <laughs> table topic master. Um, Concerning the best uh, um, uh, information of prize I've gotten from a podcast would probably be from a few years ago where we were out and we were out doing our traditional Easter egg hunt at the beach naturally, which is where we go every year. And we, we, we there used to be, before we built this little cabin that stands there now, there used to be this big, little forest where there were a bunch of just random trees and bushes and stuff. And all of a sudden I look at this tree and I just see, I see a golden egg at the very top. I'm like, oh my God, finally, like money, like who wants candy these days in all honesty. And so I just, I was reaching for it and I remember trying to get to it, but I fell naturally. And so what I didn't realize is on the back of the tree, I ended up seeing a second golden egg because it's supposed to be one for me and one for my sister. And so I ended up taking them both. I never told my mom or my parents, but in an obsequious manner, I told her that I just found one and the other one was lost in time. Thank you. We're out of time. Okay. I have a bunch more too. Oh, wait. Timer straight forward. Timer. Did everybody qualify? Yeah. Okay. Let's go for two. Toastmaster. Oh, for one. Okay. Most improved. Send your, <laughs> send your vote to KMB if you're online. We will then text it to Carlos Benito. So we're going to give our votes to John Lucitelli here and to Captain Moja Belay online for, for those folks on Zoom. Let's do a two minute break. Right. Yeah. 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 Not the people inside here. You can see it. Yeah, it's for the people in Zoom. That they you might oh, yeah. Yes. You can leave yeah. the mic. But you know, people are people. So you know, dare I straighten this? Uh, mm, there you go. Yeah. For uh, some strange reason, I don't see you on the list. Who, who are you talking to, Roy? What are you looking at, Roy? Hey, uh, Chardonnay. Yeah, it's funny. 
it's actually good. You just wait. Oh, it's anchovies, garlic. I, I love it. I, I usually take anchovies. And yeah. I don't see you on the list, Chardonnay, but I voted for you. <laughs> okay, I'll put that down. All right. Thank you. I love my little Easter hat. <laughs> I've gotten two votes, or actually three so far, on Zoom. And Darby, yeah, send them to me. I think I'm under K. Mosier Boulay on Zoom. Also known as Chardonnay. <laughs> yeah. And the ironic thing is, I do not really like wine, so. I know. Scotch, you like Scotch, I know. Actually, vodka, but um, and kombucha, but I don't really mix the two. Kombucha is that a liqueur? <laughs> I've never heard of kombucha. What's that? Kombucha is a fermented green or black tea, and it's got a special uh, microorganism in it that makes it. You know, it's like think probiotics. So think all the things that are good for your gut. So it's with it being fermented get a lot of those types of health benefits that anything so would be in it. Kind of tastes like cider. Roy, until I met KMB, I only had amateur biotics. <laughs> then I met her and she introduced me to kombucha. And now I drink probiotics. <laughs> very good, Jordo. Very good. Thank you very much. We're in the time clock here. We are a professional outfit. Thank you very much. Let's be obsequious about this. Let's get to our most important part, the operations of your oration to improve on your professional professions. Well, allow me to introduce our first speaker, Jay Shaw. Jay ruminates on the path his life has taken since graduating from college. Congratulations. In his speech entitled, Spiritual Rewards. Let's all welcome Jay Shaw. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jay. Good morning. Do you believe in fate, Neo? Morpheus asks Neo in the Matrix. Neo says, no. Why not? I don't like the idea that I'm not in control of my life. I know exactly what you mean. Wow. I used to think about the control of my life. And I used to try to control my destiny. As our amazing former Zoom master Carson Schaefer says, man plans and Carson? God laughs. God laughs. My whole life I try to control everything. I got straight A's or I tried to at least. I tried to get to an Ivy League, which didn't work, unlike it did for my sisters. And then I graduated college, had a pretty good degree, and I finally got a job. And on November 7th, 2014, I woke up in my Calabasas apartment in a beautiful house in an amazing neighborhood north of LA. And I drove through the Agora Hills Valley and went to my office and said, Mr. Shaw, come with me to this office. And then the phone was off the hook. I picked up the phone. Someone says, Jay, your position has been terminated. You'll be paid up till the end of the day. You'll be escorted out of the office immediately. And I'm like, I thought we were fine. Why, why is this happening? But I didn't actually really care. Half of, me, half of me spoke with him with the mind of convincing him to keep my job. And the other half of me was happy that this happened. I, I knew something more was in it for me going forward. I couldn't tell you what, but I knew that something good was happening. Two months or three months prior to this job incident, I went to an acting school, which anyone who's interested in the arts or theatrics, I, not theatrics, theater or arts in general, should check out. It's called Truthful Acting Studios. And it's in, it's in Orlando. It's a few miles south of a downtown on Orange Avenue. And I decided that I wanted to be an actor. 
and I was out in Los Angeles. And so this is the perfect place for me to now be free and jobless and uh, interested in uh, exploring the arts. So I, I took acting classes there and I ended up becoming a tennis coach and life took me on a path which eventually brought me back to Orlando where I've lived since 2006. At that time, right after I came, my grandmother became a citizen at the age of 89 and I trained her for her exam. Like, who's George Washington? How many senators are there? Who's the Florida senator? Questions like, like I prepped her, prepped her, prepped her. She got her citizenship on July 1st, 2015. And five days later, she ended up in the hospital. And then three months later, she died. And my mom told me so many times, I am so glad you were here with me for that. Had I kept my job, I wouldn't have been with her for that. Had I kept my job, I wouldn't have been able to do this acting path as much as I did in Los Angeles with further training to continue here. A year or so later, I joined Winter Park Toastmasters and I met most of the people that I'm looking at right now. And it's been a journey for me then too. I went from being uptight, as Carson would attest to. Am I right, Carson? A bit. A bit, <laughs> at least, at least a bit. And as many of you remember, to becoming a lot more loose and a lot more free with myself as I've ceded more and more and more control of my life from my own mind and my own control and capacity to something larger, whether it's divinity, destiny, God, whatever it may be. Life has treated me very well, but I have had to reduce and let go of my fear. And as it's gone along, I've gotten rewards that I can't begin to describe. They've been largely internal, but they've been external as well. Now, with respect to the world and everything, people have told me, why don't you have a job? What are you doing? You're wasting your time. You're not going to make it. It's not going to be good for you. Like, why is mom supporting you? All these things. Right. But I knew something, something was happening, something deeper that could not be understood from my control based and fear based mind. My deeper instincts and in my soul drove me. And as a result of my positions and how I've lived my life, when my father fell ill in 2016, I spent a good part of a year and three quarters at his service. He'd call me the next day, I was there in New Jersey several times asking people, can I stay at your house? Can I stay at your house? Oh, I need to get a rental car. Can I have food? I had to do these things in my jobless, moneyless position. And I did when no one else was willing to do so. Two months ago, three months ago, 90 days ago, 100 days ago, something like that, my mom fell sick. And there I was with her every single day in the hospital for 25 days from January 1st to January 25th, with the exception of three days after I got my COVID shot and she was doing okay. I was there every day helping her, holding her hand when her heart rate would go up and her breathing would get very bad. Talking to this doctor, that doctor, keeping my phone always with me, all the volume always on, checking it every hour, making sure that she didn't call me like there was some emergency. And she told me, Jay, I cannot tell you I cannot express in words how relieved I am that you're here with me through this. And so I was there day after day after day after day after day, following my soul's impulse to sacrifice and abandon everything to be at her service as I was for my father. And then she died 10 or 11 weeks ago. Those material concerns have now, in a way that I could never predict, have been taken care of. I've inherited our house and all this whole money concern that everyone was nagging me about for so long is not a concern now. Not in the way that I thought it would be. Not I thought I'd, I'd make a million dollars and all these things and that didn't happen. But I've turned out okay and I was able to follow God's calling. In uh, the Bible, in, the, the, in Matthew 6.28, Jesus says, See the flowers, they neither spin nor do they toil. Yet Solomon in all of his glory was not clothed as well as these, which is to say they didn't have the stress and fear and anxiety. Yet King Solomon in all of his glory 
couldn't have captured the beauty of these flowers. So for me, I have followed God's calling and I've been rewarded internally and externally in ways that I could have never predicted. And even Solomon doesn't feel as good as I do right now. Thank you. My friends, what you just heard and witnessed is the personification of the word of Sikrius. Thank you very much for that great, great talk. My mantra has always been let go and let God. So for our next speaker, our second speaker is ATM Ty Patton, ready at the realm here. Back in January of this year, Ty tested positive for Corona and he has lived to talk about it. Today, he simply desires to share with you some facts and beliefs he has regarding COVID. He realizes beliefs are very personal mindsets, often based on individual experiences. And because they are personal, he's not expecting to change your beliefs today, simply to share his own. With his speech entitled, Goal Boldly. Please welcome ATM Ty Patton. As our Toastmaster has said, I am a COVID, I guess you'd say I'm a, I'm a COVID survivor. <laughs> yeah, that's what I am, a COVID survivor. Although some may, some may not really agree that that's a good thing, but we all have our friends and enemies, don't we? <laughs> good morning, fellow Toastmasters and guests in this room and also those of you who are in Zoom. A death is a serious thing and something that affects all of us because we don't get out of this alive. It's something we need to keep in mind. The cause of death will cause the survivors of the deceased to have grief and heartache. COVID is serious, and we need to think of it that way. And I can tell you that in January of this year, I came into Toastmasters and I was feeling fine. 24 hours later, I was not feeling so fine. I felt I was coming down with something, but I didn't know what. So I got in touch with Tim Langer and I expressed to him, I didn't want to expose all of you to whatever the bug was that I had. And so therefore I would not be attending his party that evening. 12.30 a.m. the following Wednesday, I was in the VA hospital and I had tested positive for COVID. Yes, yes, COVID is serious. Yet we need to put it in a proper perspective. There are a few facts that we need to know. As of yesterday, we had nearly 550,000 individuals in the United States alone who had been credited for the COVID death. But there's other information we need to know. In a news conference held April 20th of 2020, according to Dr. Ngazi Iziki, the director of the Illinois Department of Health, the policy of the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, and I quote, if you were in hospice and already been given a few weeks to live, and then you were also found to have COVID, that would be counted as a COVID death. It means that if technically, even if you clearly died of an alternate cause and you had COVID, it would be recorded as a COVID death. Doesn't mean that you died of COVID, just that you had COVID at the time of your death, unquote. Okay, so let me explain that in plain English. 
If I were in hospice and I had been diagnosed with terminal cancer, given three weeks to live, and in the meantime, I happened to contract COVID from one of the healthcare workers there, at the time of my death, I would be considered a COVID death by CV CDC protocol. Further in a report that was published in the New York Post, and I quote, CDC research estimates 6% of reported COVID deaths were caused directly by COVID. The other 94% died with and not exclusively of COVID. Of the, on the average, the elderly had on average 2.6 other health issues, unquote. Now of those 2.6, other health issues that these frail elderly had. They could have been heart attack, they could have been diabetes, cancer, could have been a car accident for all we know. So you're probably wondering, you're probably wondering, Ty, what is the death rate for COVID compared to that of other issues? Yes. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> According to CDC, during the flu season of 2018-2019, which was a span of only five and a half months, we had 34,200 deaths due to the flu. So in a period that was one third the span of our COVID cloud, we had 34,000 deaths. Now, using the CDC 6% rate on the 5, 550,000 that we now have that have reported died of COVID, 6% of that is only 33,000. And that's for 15 months. If you annualize that for only a 12 month period, it's actually, actually gonna be about 26,400, far below what we have had for other death rates. The American Diabetic Association, they reported in 2017 that we had 34,200 deaths. Excuse me, I apologize. We had 83,564 deaths. So in one third the time that we've been under the COVID cloud, we have on an annualized basis, three times as many deaths for COVID. And yet I don't see anyone closing down Krispy Kreme and all these other uh, facilities that have sugar and, and sweets. Ladies and gentlemen, if you had someone who passed away from COVID, I, I sincerely, my heart goes out to you and I feel sorry for you. And you know, I, I can only say that that it is hurtful, the grief that you feel. America was founded by bold Europeans who, chart, who sailed the chartered, the uncharted oceans of, Atlant of the Atlantic. We, we were settled and civilized by bold Americans who risked everything, including their lives and the lives of their children. And many of you in this room have risked everything to begin your own businesses. I'm not suggesting that we, that we be reckless. I'm suggesting that we be bold as we move forward and realize that COVID is not even as deadly as so many of the other things that we confront every day. Fellow Toastmasters. Thank you so much, Ty Patton, for your Megillah on Corona politics. Next, third speaker, distinguished Toastmaster, Carson Schaefer, up at bat. He spent his first three months of his presidency sitting in his desk in Zoom, in his pajamas, half drunk and wishing he was sober sitting here with us. Here today, he's sitting with us. 
I'm not sure about the sober part. Happy beyond belief to be sitting amongst his best friends once more. Please welcome our sober president, distinguished Toastmaster Carson Schaefer. So I leave and Carmela is buying cold sausage McMuffins. I come back and you guys got little Debbie's now? <laughs> How long has this been going on? I would have been back long ago. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters and guests, I can't tell you how nice it is to be back in this room with you guys. This stuff started a year ago, and we all went to Zoom because we had to. They shut this place down. We started, we had three people. They said, how can we do this? Everybody said, oh, I'm on Zoom, what can we do? I said, well, let's get a big screen TV. So one of our members loaned us this big clunky, heavy TV, and then I said, well, you know, you need a good sound system. Do you think you could make something? Yeah, I could make something. So I made this. And I'm really proud of it. It's given us a way to have hybrid meetings that's not on a laptop. So I've learned a lot making this and learning how to operate it. I have sat at my house drenched, I swear to you, drenched in sweat, trying to make this all happen. I'm an engineer and sitting remotely when you can't touch anything is stressful beyond belief. But my wife is a nurse that ran a COVID wing and she's burying her patients like this, body bags, body bags, body bags. Dan's experience or Ty's experience was not my experience. My experience is watching my wife with patients she's had some of for, for almost a year, putting them in body bags at a rate none of them ever thought. My experience has been two months ago when my neighbor had a stroke, took his dad to the hospital and they said, Sorry, we're full. He's having a stroke, golden hour. Yeah, try another hospital. So he took him to Cape Canaveral. We're full. And now his dad's messed up. The problem was never how many people are going to die. The problem was we're going to overwhelm the hospitals because they don't have a whole lot of headroom. They run it at a high level of profitability, which means every percentage empty is money they're not getting. So they run pretty close and it doesn't take much to tip them over. So I watched Cindy take patients at a rate no one had ever even dreamed of, putting them in body bags, in body bags. Yep, and the first 45 days of this, so many people died at home that the CDC said, for 45 days, count every COVID positive death as COVID. They thought that if they did that, the numbers would get right. They stopped after 45 days, but nobody cared. Masks. Don't wear masks for the first month and first month because first responders didn't have masks. My wife was begging for masks. So they said, give your mask to first responders. It's more important. Why? They didn't know. They were pulling off nebulizers and the patient would go, ah, and they would breathe this unbelievably heavy payload in and well, within a week or two, they were all dead. And they learned that one the hard way. More body bags, more body bags, more body bags. On the other side, I'm a businessman who owns a company in Orlando, and I've been part of the business community, and we can't shut it all down. So I became an expert. Which angle would you like me to argue it from? <laughs> I can argue it from any way you want. So then, do I want to get the shot? Oh, jeez. My wife's against it. Some of our members who are medical are against it. It hasn't been tested well enough. I can tell you all about RNA chopped out by CRISPR and exactly how they made I can tell you, I can argue it from any angle you'd like. So I didn't really know how I felt. I did know that in the beginning, two MDs I know looked at me and said, Carson, you really don't want to get this. And I said, okay. And then as I learned more and more, I got high A1C and I have A negative blood, which is where everybody went, oh, that's bad. And I had a doctor who was looking at my chart going, Mr. Schaefer, with your A1C, you really don't want to get this. And I said, yeah, I know. I got a negative blood too. And he flinched. <clears throat> I made a doctor at the VA flinch when I told him my blood type. And he goes, you really, really don't want to get this. And I said, I said why not? I'll try. I'll see what he says. Yeah, doc, but like 99.8% of the people are fine. Mr. Schaefer, you would not be in that 99.8%. Really? Okay. So I was waiting in line for something else to VA, and they said, you qualify for the vaccine, would you like it? And my mouth opened and the word yes came out. 
And I thought, wow, I know how I feel. I swear to God, I really didn't. So I got it. Got second shot two weeks ago. Here I am. I don't want to wear a mask. I want to go back to my life like it was with you guys. And we're slowly getting back there. But I have watched my wife, three <coughs> patients in body bags, 12 hour shifts till we finally got her to quit after one year of never working less than 12 hours a day, never less than five, usually six days a week. Now she's got another job. She works three days a week and gets four days off and makes a ton of money doing it. If you've seen Talladega Nights, I looked at her and I said, Cindy, I'm a nurse's husband. I don't work. <laughs> she tells me I have to get a, a job. <laughs> so like Jay, I'm not allowed to spend money I don't have. <laughs> Although he has it, I have to work no matter what. Because, you know, nurses are mean people. And my wife certainly is mean. <laughs> and so here I am. Yeah, I have a farm and I got a million animals and all this stuff and I'm not bored and it's the endless project. But you guys don't know what it's like for a year to stay in your home because you had a bunch of MDs go, you really, really don't want to. My daughter had it for a month. She's been in the ER four times since she had it. She was 25 running five miles a day. And she's had lung problems, vascular problems, all kinds of stuff since then. You don't want it, Carson, stay at home. This thing and being on Zoom has given all of us that have been on Zoom something that you can't describe. All you see is your family. My wife worked, nobody's home but me all day, every day. I got horses, I got chickens, I got cows and dogs. You know, I had a bad traffic jam, but two dogs got in my way going to the meeting. But now to be able to come in here and see you, this is what's <laughs> kept us sane, is be every Friday morning to be able to see all of you guys and watch the room fill up. Yeah, there's some, sometimes Jay looked like he rolled out of bed, probably because he did. <laughs> but for the rest of us, it's been a touchstone of real sanity. So thank you, Winter Park Toastmasters, You've made it possible for us to do this. Oh, and here, you go. Now, here you go, buddy. Here you go, sir. <laughs> sir? Sir. Oh, sir. yeah, just, uh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> what he failed to tell us was he laments to have not gone to his AA meetings. <laughs> I need diabetics in my room. And what he failed to tell us also is this speech that he gave was off the cuff. So thank you. Lillian Cattleman is chomping at the bit to come up here. Lillian Cattleman, she's a real estate broker and the owner of Liliana Lee, LLC Realty. She's been a Toastmaster for six years. She enjoys being a Toastmaster, improve her leadership and communication skills. She has delivered several speeches before. She wrote down every speech and practice it and practice it before she came up here to recite it. Today, just like Carson, she wants to do it impromptu. <laughs> this is her first impromptu speech. She is daring, she is courageous. Let's hear it for Lillian Cattleman. <laughs> Good morning, fellow Toastmasters. Good morning. Who is here having your own business? Wow, <coughs> surprise. That's kind of hat. Who wants to start your own business? Great. Today, I will share you a wonderful book, excellently wrote by our Toastmaster, Tim Taylor. Oh. This book will help you start your own business, or if you have your own business, you can go through this book 
have your business dramatically improved. This book title is called How to Start and Run a Successful AT Company. See the book title, don't fool by it. Actually, this book wrote by all Tim Taylor's heart, all his own personal experience. It's not an AT company, any company, any business this book apply to. First chapter, he had 19 questions. If you have a business, I suggest you go through all these 19 questions. He started each chapter with a excellent quote. I'm here to share to you. First the chapter, he said, your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. Steve Jobs. You all know who is Steve Jobs. He found the app. You have to do what you love, what you like, what's your life passion. This book tells you how to live your life. Each chapter has started with a quote tell you what you go through your business step by step. It's not only for AT company, apply to any company like I just said. I give an example of the question he asked. What's your business service? For example, my business service, I represented buyers. I represented sellers. I also represented investors. I also manage real estate properties. So I have a full service, actually. Tim Taylor recommended in your business, you don't serve one product. You want to serve multiple products. For example, Apple have iPhone, Apple also have iPad, Apple also have iWatch, and also other products affiliated. You don't want to, your business only have one product, like some people tell you. Oh, you should only focus your real estate investment. That's only one particular service. You want to serve all aspects and extend your service. So make your business flourish. That's what he suggested in this book. Another quote I share with you. This is a Chinese verb. It says, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. I like this verb. I learned this verb, heard it several times, thousands of times. What's its deeply meaning of this verb is, if you want to start something, you have to start step by step. You have to start, you only dream, you never do it, you only say, Oh, I will start my business. Oh, I will write a book. Oh, I will do this, I will do that. You're only thinking about, you're never doing it. If you want to start your own business, start to do it. You have to start the first the step, do it. <laughs> Another example, 
I share with you. I told you all is his personal experience, excellent advice and suggestion for you. You should read it. If you don't read it, you feel regretted. You never go wrong by doing what's right for the customer. Do you believe that? Yes, I do. I do business. I'm not a sub-curious sub -curious woman. I serve the customer with dignity. I serve the customer with all my full knowledge. I do what is right for the customer. I don't serve the customer with security. Mm -hmm. If he can do the business, he from 40 years old become millionaire, you can do it. Thank you. Wow. Folks, this is what this is all about. Someone with the language like yours doesn't consider it an obstacle. What a wonderful example of courage, valor, taking your time to come up here and just motivate us. I loved it. I loved it. Congratulations for motivating us. And a great use of the word of sickness, of security, she said. Well, that does it, folks. Did all the speakers qualify, Mr. Timer? Yes, sir. So we can vote for any four. Vote for one. You're going to be sending it in Zoom to Catherine Mosier Belay. Who will then? Who will then send it to you? Me. Your phone should have the votes already for tabletop. Okay. KMB, can we get a thumbs up if that's correct? I see you shaking your head. We also have these at your tables, at your seats. Please, if you have not put uh, an evaluation of your own, a personal suggestion or comment, please do that now and, and pass it forward so we can distribute it to the speakers. Question? Yes. Am I sending all the total vote count or just the winner for each category? The total vote count. Thank you. Everything to Carlos or Tim Linger. They both have available votes. Thank you. Did you give that to Dave? Anyway. All right, let's proceed on with the meeting. Now we have our evaluation portion and we'll hear the critique and the suggestions from the evaluators to our speakers. Our master evaluator today is Lazar. Lazar? Lazar? Lazar. Lazar. Lazar Lekadu yeah. is a former electrical engineer who is enjoying his retirement with his lovely wife, Kate. Today, he will be our master evaluator. Let's welcome him. Lazar Lekadu. Good morning. Now, this is the part of the meeting where four obsequious Toastmaster will be given constructive remarks to our four wonderful speakers. Now, the first evaluator will be Tim Linder. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters. Good morning. Good morning. Up against a DTM. Another one who could and probably should be a DTM, Ty Patton, and an accomplished speaker, Lillian Kettleman, is our very own Jay Shaw. Jay is absolutely an amazing speaker. And I'm going to put it out there and say I voted for you. Not because I'm evaluating you, it's because your <laughs> speech is, was perfect in so many ways. Everyone should take notes. Everyone should watch Jay. Everyone should watch all the speakers today. Absolutely amazing. Whoever wins, it doesn't matter because top-notch A-plus for all four speakers. 
But I'm here to talk about Jay, his clarity, the, the speed of his speech, the tone of his speech, the vocal variety, the hand movements, the body movements, the attention to the audience, to the attention of the people of, of Zoom land. Perfect, perfect. Jay could be a professional speaker and possibly is because I've seen him on YouTube doing talks and interviews with people, quite impressive. NBC, ABC, Fox quality. I've watched Jay sing. I've watched him sing in a speech in this room. Quite amazing. Here's a guy who is not afraid, not afraid of going to the next level, not afraid of getting down on his knees, not afraid of talking to all of us in such a calm, cool, collective manner. Jay has once again proven that he is an effective, accomplished speaker. Up against three potential DTMs, one definite DTM, and I think you shined equally as good as the other three accomplished speakers as well. So thank you, Shaw, Jay, Shaw, for being a member of this club and always doing a bang up job and being a role model for all of us. Thank you, Toastmasters. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Tim Linger. Now our second evaluator will be on Zoom land, Toastmaster Jaren Sproul. Hey, good morning, everyone. Today I am evaluating Toastmaster Ty Patton. Ty, I truly enjoyed your speech. A few great things that I want to say that I'd like to share would be, I love the fact that you started your speech off by getting the audience laughing. Great tip, great thing to do uh, always. I love the way that you were able to scan the room, draw the audience in. You even looked into the camera for us out here in Zoom land. We felt a part of your speech and that too was awesome. The projection of your voice, your hand gestures, all of those things came into play. You mentioned that you wanted to speak on a very tough subject and not alienate the audience. You wanted everyone to feel comfortable. This was something that you wanted to, to do to stretch yourself. And I think that you did it well. One of the areas that I think that you really could have really maximized this opportunity was in your introduction. Yes, you got everyone laughing, but there's a way in which I believe because it's a topic that some people may feel one way and feel another, one way that you could corral this whole topic or, or this speech was by letting people know that, you know what? Life is about perspective. Some of us may see things one way and see things another. Life is rarely ever right or wrong. By letting people know and giving examples as to how one can look at things in different ways, it may make people feel better about how they feel on the inside. Whether they suffered a death or like you, you lucked out and you're still here with us and we're happy about that. If you help people look at life just from different perspectives, I think a speech like this will be well received by anyone. Overall, you did a good job and I'd like to see you refine this a little bit more without having to use your notes. Overall, again, good job. Thank you. Thank you. Garen. Garen. Forget always that Garen. I know Sprout, but it's Garen I can get. <laughs> so our next, the third evaluator will be our Toastmaster, Vani Patterson. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters. Good morning. Evaluating the one who so meticulously evaluates me, what a task. And I will say, I could not stop listening. You are captivating. And your speech, it took us down by shedding light on your family's experiences with COVID. But then you so tactfully brought us back up with humor and laughs. And then you so smoothly brought it back home to how elated you were to be back. And it takes a master of the spoken word to be able to deliver a speech with such morbid tones, with ease, comfort, and the humor that you did. 
Thank you for your obsequious commitment to the service to the club. As far as clarity is concerned, to be honest, I wasn't sure where you were going or what you were going to talk about, but you strung it all together somehow. <laughs> Vocal variety is a staple of your character. Eye contact from the moment you are on deck. Gestures, audience awareness, comfort level, you know you have those things. As far as topic and interest, the topic was definitely a stark contrast to the prior speech, not to mention people love hearing things about themselves that they're involved in. So speaking about the club was definitely a plus and it held our attention. Back to the plan. Again, I'm not sure if you had a plan, but we could all learn a thing or two by about delivering off the cuff from the presentation that you gave today. I believe you already challenged yourself by speaking off the cuff for the first time in years, you said. And my only recommendation is to continue to challenge yourself by stepping out of your comfort zone with your speeches so that we can all learn a thing or two from you. Fellow Toastmasters. Thank you, thank you, Toastmaster Bernie Patterson. That was great. Now, our fourth and last evaluator will be our dear Toastmaster Kathleen Lekadu. Good morning, fellow Toastmasters. Good morning, Kate. Morning. When I asked um, Toastmaster Lillian Kelman, uh, what do you want me to focus on? She says, well, I'm doing an impromptu speech. And in my head, I was like, what? <laughs> <You know? laughs> an impromptu speech for five to seven minutes? I'm like, that's amazing. You, you're, you're really brave. And you wanted me to focus on grammar. So I had to be obsequious to evaluate your speech. You started off with, you asked who here wants to start your own business? So you involved already the audience, which was great. And you introduced the book and you actually had the book and you went at such a, a pace that I was able to capture the title, How to Start and Run a Successful IT Company by Tim Taylor. And you went further to explain how the book can be used for other businesses. So it made it relevant to everyone in the room. And you show great poise when you were reading a passage from the book and you read it perfectly. Now, since you mentioned that you wanted me to focus on grammar, so a few things, I caught that you said, I give an example. You could have used, I will give an example. And another one was, you don't want your business have one product. So it should be, you don't want your business to have one product. And you said, I do what's right for the custom. Sometimes you drop the customer and sometimes you set it. So just keep mindful of that. Your pace was so even that the minor grammatical errors did not take away from your message. And you proved that with or without perfect grammar, just start your business. Don't think about it, just start. So thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Toastmaster Kathleen Lekadu. Now, this is the end of our evaluation portion. It's time now to vote for one and I'll send the. Uh, oh, thank you. Do all qualify. Great. Thank you so much, Steve. So now we can vote for one. I'll send over here the vote to Nooch. No, to Dan. To then today, oh, change to then and on Zoom link to K M B, right? As we are doing that, we will continue our schedule. Now we're gonna go. We will go to our report. The report will be over here. The first one, the R counter report with. James Rigg, our Toastmaster, James Rigg. Once again, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Carlos Benitez, I had one double clutch. Mark Ehlers, no violations. In the brief 30 seconds that I was up the first time, had two double clutches, one and and so. Nate, no violations, and you almost made me want to eat sardines, almost. Roy, one double clutch. 
Mark O'Shaughnessy, one double clutch. Dan Wallace, one Anders So. Tabitha, two Ozer Ums. Darby, three Ozer Ums. Um, lucky, we had two Ozer Ums, one double clutch, two Anders So's. Jay Shaw, one Ozer Um, and two double clutches. Hi, two double clutches. Carson Schaefer, no violations. Lillian, I had you with two double clutches. Lazar, Tim, Garen, and Bonnie, no violations. And then the last one with Kathy, one double clutch. Thank you. Thank you so much, Postmaster James Ray. Now, our time report with Steve Joseph. Toastmaster Steve Joseph. All right, all right. So for the table topics, the most loquacious was Captain Moser Belay at one minute, 19 seconds. The most obsequious of the time limit was Dan Wallace at 45 seconds. For the prepared speeches, Jay Shaw came in at seven minutes, 26 seconds. Ty Patton came in at seven minutes, 22 seconds. Carson Schaefer came in at seven minutes, 16 seconds. And Lillian came in at seven minutes, 18 seconds. Wow. Uh, particularly loquacious in this case. Mm -hmm. For the evaluation portion, Linger came in at two minutes, five seconds. Darren Sprawl came in at two minutes, one second. Bonnie Patterson came in at one minute, 31 seconds. Very well done, Bonnie. And Catherine Lincoln came in at one minute, 50 seconds. That is the end of my report. Thank you, Dr. Master Steve. Now, our Dinger reports all the way from Zoom land with Shaheen. Toastmaster Shaheen. Hi. Hi, fellow master, uh, Toastmasters. So here's the list of uh, those uh, Toastmasters uh, who didn't use the word today. Uh, Jerry Sparrow, 25 cents. Tim Linger, 25 cents. Cousin Shelfer, uh, 25 cents. Ty Patton, 25 cents. Jay Shah, 25 cents. Dabi Israel, 25 cents. Nate Bo, 25 cents. Tabata Rupo, 25 cents. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shai. Now, this is the end of. Uh... No, you continue. You continue. <laughs> Our meeting with now our Gamelian reports. Gamelian report with our Gamelian John Nusetelli. No, no. Okay. Let me tell you, there's some good stuff here today. I got some good stuff. <laughs> okay. Lucky O'Shaughnessy. He comes when he's five years old. 12 years old and 18 year old. That means it'll be eight more years before we see him again. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Shaylin, you know, she's talking about the dress code, but she just has a headshot. <laughs> what is she wearing underneath? We'll never know. Never know, right. Uh, attorney Mark Ehlers, he uh, has given us a difference between lying and what was the word he used? Filtered. Filtered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Filtered. That's interesting. I never. Anybody ever heard that term before for lying? No. no. It looks like that, that would be something by uh, our president would use. Okay. <laughs> Now we got uh, <laughs> we love it. We all need to know that uh, you know, usually I never say that, uh, but I'm I'm very going down here. <laughs> okay. Mary prefers chicken. Many family many families prefer chicken for Easter. But Dan Wallace, he likes to eat his pet. Oh. <laughs> Oscar. 
Usually Oscar is a fish, isn't it? Or turn, usually Oscar? Cookie monster. Cookie monster, right. Okay, again, we're gonna go with our new Toastmaster Lucky. He confessed to his father who didn't know this, <laughs> that he confiscated his sister's golden egg. <laughs> that took guts, <laughs> especially with your father. All right, now we got You know, Bo. Um, Nate. Yeah, Bo, Nate. He uh, gave us an impression, maybe redneck. To the new people here, he doesn't really talk that way. <laughs> but he was very convincing, wasn't he? If you hadn't heard him talk before, Red light. No, no, no red light. Oh, wow. yeah. uh, you mean you want me to, you're going to get the hook out? You're going to get the hook out for me? Yeah. Well, meeting's over in two minutes. All right, I guess I'll bail. <laughs> Wait, I got one more here. Oh, Ty Pass. He says, death is serious. <laughs> yes, it is. Really? Sorry. <laughs> Serious? Depends on where you're going afterwards. Uh, oh, good answer. All right. You'll see me another in maybe 17 more years. <laughs> Thank you, Toastmaster Nooch. That was great as a grammarian. Well, this is, uh, I think, and now the portion of the evaluation. And um, I believe, okay, I believe that we had a great meeting. Uh, this is the first time in long, long time where we did not have a, a lot of uh, replacement in the schedule. So that was really great. And I say, thank you so much. Without further ado, I will go back and return the control to our Toastmaster, Carlos Benite. Thank you very much. Let's wrap this up with the tally. We have winners with a drum roll, please, for table topics. The man who likes to eat sardines on his pizza, Nate Bo. For the evaluator, our own Miss Bonnie Patterson. portion has been a great meeting. I do not want to delay. I will be obsequious and obedient and pass the lectern control to our Presidente, Carson Schaefer, the student state Thank you. Okay. Remember when I said if you didn't sing, you'd win? I would like to apologize to Carl, or maybe I'd like to apologize for Carl for this. But Nuchitelli trying to figure out how to say obsequious. Yeah. It doesn't get better than that. And announcements. The party is April 10th. I understand the band will be there. If you play an instrument, you may want to show up. 
We have the Toastmaster District Convention coming up. If you've never been, they're really cool. They're a lot of fun. Any other Toastmaster related announcements? The May schedule is going around. I'm sorry I held on to it a little bit late, but go ahead and start putting out the people here that are in the room. And I won't be here next week, so my role is available for anyone. I'd also like to thank Tim Taylor and Carlos and everybody that's lugged this crazy thing back and forth. Of course, now that I have it, I'll make a nice case for it. So, but thanks to everybody who did all the Zoom stuff. It's been an honor to have you guys do this. And now with our thought of the day is Toastmaster. Who just got thought of the day? Darby Israel. All right, let me. Darby. Yes. Unmute yourself and give us the thought, please. All right, I've unmuted myself. This, this thought is appropriate for such an excellent, excellent meeting. It reminds us to do our best. Oh, I muted him. <laughs> oh. I thought I unmuted myself. Do you hear me now? Yes, do it again. Okay, all right. Um, this quote is for today's excellent, excellent meeting. It reminds us to strive, to do our best, and seek a level of excellence in everything we do. And it is. Excellence is never an accident. It is the high, it is the result of high intentions, sincere effort, intelligent direction, skillful execution, and the vision to see obstacles as opportunities. Thank you very much, Darby. And parties at Jay Shaw's house, and we are adjourned. No, uh, Jordan, Jardo, are you still on? Jordan, ah. I was going to ask Jordan if he's ever seen the word of the day murder as often as this word was today. I, I, it's getting to the point where if you just throw the word out, it, it, it counts. <laughs> we might consider using it correctly in the future, uh, whatever the word is. Well, it helps if the grammarian reinforces that, let's just say. Yeah, it helps with the, if you can even say it. <laughs> anyway. I mean, it's so easy to just go online and, and press, you know, pronounce and you can hear somebody pronounce it. But I mean, yeah. why would why would Nooch do research? <laughs> Good point. Uh, Garen, congratulations. Uh, do, you, do you go to the next step or not on uh, speech? Well, sir. Oh, well, yes, sir. Now you got very far. I mean, gee. You, what was it, district? You got the district? I think that's, I think that's what it was, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's like three rounds or something. That's good. Yeah. Oh, congratulations, man. Congratulations. Thanks, Paris. Where'd you come out? I think I, re I, re I read you came in second. Is that yeah, right? I did, I did yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's such a, it's just, it's just, at that point, or at most points, it's, it's so subjective uh, from the judges. I, I for some reason. Yeah. I um I have I don't want to say like I've struggled, but every time I have gone up against um what's his name from articulators? Uh, Scott Brown? No, 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 no. The guy who won. I have no idea. I didn't see the contest. Yeah, but every time I go up against him, <laughs> I come in second place. Well, you should meet it meet him in the parking lot before. I know, the Jeremy. That's his name, Jeremy. Oh yeah, yeah. Break his leg in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if, if something happens, then I'll have to uh, step in for him. So. Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, he's good. He's good. I've heard him before. He's very good. He's very good. So uh, coming yeah. in second to him is no uh, disgrace at all. No, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. And I mean, you compete and uh, that's, that's, that's always good. So uh, is Tim, uh, Tim, are you on there or is that just your face looking at us? Oh, there he is. Wow, that was I am here, guys. I didn't want to show my face this morning because I wasn't dressed up. <laughs> <laughs> really, Tim? Really? You got, uh, you got Lillian uh, hawking your book. How'd you do that? Uh, 
I had no, I promise you, I had no earthly idea that she was going to do that. Um, about when I gave my icebreaker a few weeks ago, she came up the next week and gave me a book. I uh, was really, really sweet. And I said, well, you know, I have a copy of my book with me. Would you, would you like it? And she said, sure. And I said, well, you know, if you're not starting an IT company, blah, blah, blah. But she read the whole thing and she did the talk. I mean, I was blown away. I'm, I'm still blown away. I, uh -huh. I can't believe it. Yeah. 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 So, well, uh, yeah. Next to revival, you're the you're you're on top of the bed stand. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> well, I do talk a lot about, you know, if you're going to start your own company, you need to know these things, and it, this can apply to any company. And, yeah. Yeah. And um, very first word in the very first chapter is that should you start your own company, you know, should, uh -huh. should you really do this? Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I, I walking away without. I wanted to write a book that somebody could use from and to help them actually start them totally from scratch, like I did. Yeah, yeah. So, hey, Tim, Tim, I was going to tell you, man, you'd be surprised. I got a, I got an email this week, um, of someone who used my book in a speech therapy class. Wow. Wow. So, so you'd cool. be surprised at what people use it for, man. I mean, just, just put it out there, man. Let people do what they do. Yeah, I know. Uh, I. I uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Either one of you getting a, 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 a speaking a, uh, engagements off your books? Oh yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've spoken at I've spoken at a lot of computer conferences. Okay. Uh, before, and yeah. I always I sell my book afterwards, and uh, there's always a line of people buying wow. it. So, wow! Wow! Fantastic. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Great. I always sell out the number that I bring. However many I bring, I always sell. No, bring a few. Bring a few more next time. Yeah, uh, Darren. Uh, I mean, either what, either one of you, but uh, you know, writing a book is such a ticket to professional speaking. And uh, uh, you, I don't know if that's in your any of your ambitions or not to be a, a, a paid speaker. And I mean, making some. Well, I, but uh, you, 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 most. And it used to be that most speakers. Uh, Made us made more money the, with what was called the back of the room sale than uh, the, the speaker yeah. fee. And uh, right, right. My goal, Roy. My goal is to be, even if it's just once, to be paid for a speech. Okay, that would be. I'll give you. Know, you a, I'll give you. I'll give you the dollar the next time you speak at Toastmaster. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Tim, Tim. It's it's um it's it's quite possible, man. I mean, I've 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 been paid several times for Ooh, speeches. Nice. Um, um, we should we should talk about that, Garen. We should talk about that because yeah. I gave a motivational speech to uh, high school graduation, mm -hmm. and uh, nothing about IT. It was just motivational, and I had lots of people coming up afterwards, so they really enjoyed it. So, yeah, um, yeah. you know, I, to be a motivational speaker would be, you know, when I sell my company one day or whatever I end up doing, to be a motivational yeah. speaker after that would yeah. be so great. That's what I would love to do. Excellent. Well, it's ninety percent. I was in the business for some time. Till I till I uh, got down to a hundred pounds, and then I had to get something else. But yeah. the uh, the secret is promotion, promotion, promotion. Oh, yeah, they don't come to you. You got to you know hit it hard like you have in your business. If if you wanted to get a lot of engagements, and uh, you know I I don't want to say this, but uh, four four or five figure dollar engagements. Uh, it's all you know. It's uh, uh, Rosalind Russell. Uh, who's an old, old actress. She's been dead for a hundred years, but somebody asked her, how do you get to Hollywood? And she said, promotion, promotion, and promotion. Mm -hmm. If you happen to have a little talent, that's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Marketing, yeah. yeah, man. You're right. Yeah, yeah, that's all about that, yeah. Hey, Roy. Yeah, yeah. Just say bye to everybody. I got to jump off. Okay. Bye. I, hope, bye. I, hope you're, I, I hope you're on the first floor. <laughs> you know me i'm always willing to do the extreme so <laughs> the 15th floor here she goes yeah all right bye bye, bye shart bye shart bye. Right. Spats. I gotta run too, you say spats today john yeah. yes yeah right, ab absolutely i'll probably get there early and have a couple of shots before you show up yeah. hey you know something funny john uh, no, I, sh I probably should tell you at this spats, but I'll I'll just set it up for you. Uh, I want to tell you how Herb uh, left uh, left the group last week. <laughs> he leave the group. Herb right? was here. I saw him logged in. Huh? He was he was on Zoom. I saw him logged in. Oh. 
No, no, yeah, he was, but he dropped off. Uh, he said he was going to be here personally. He dropped off just before you gave your report, Dutch. <laughs> I got to kill this thing off, so I got another half an hour before it finishes reporting. All right, all right, buddy. We'll see you. Uh, maybe we'll see you at lunch today, huh? I'll be there. Good, good. So long. Bye.